Mm-hmm. Got it. Thank you, Robot Lady. Oh, robot Lady say hello. Robot Lady say you get it recorded now. Yeah. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hello, everybody. We welcome you to the Underworld Party. We welcome you to the Underworld Party today, and we're going to have some fun times today, maybe a little bit of fun. I want to say, do you know the things like um, if you enjoy this, please uh, pass it on, please pay it forward or donate. Donations are very appreciated. And donations are paypal.me slash dare so hey. There will be link. There will be links to this. And uh, also, also, there's a Patreon that's very cool. Me and Larissa. Patreon.com slash Animist Arts, and uh, you should go uh, check it out because it's very cool. And today we are, you know, today we are bumping and grinding and uh, dancing and playing and uh, doing some things about our thumbs <laughs> We are here with the esteemable, prolific, and uh, magical creature known as Mariah West. Mariah West is uh, someone I know from this town called Portland, Oregon, and they do lots of cool shit. Many cool things, and I'm going to ask them today about how they do so many cool fucking things. (laughs) So many, it's too many. They have a fashion design Etsy store where they make really awesome stretchy clothes. That's Mo West Creations. We'll talk about that. They also are in a band, singer-songwriter. The band is called Sibling. That's with an X, X X-I-B-L-I-N-G. You can find them on the YouTubes and the Instagrams and the Spotify's and the Bandcamps. And we will talk about this. And also, they are an amazing painter, which I hate them for. Artist, etc. We'll talk about this. And they also are very plant witchy. And also know a lot about tarot and astrology. And uh, it is just a, a grab bag of, of magical tomfoolery. And uh, Mo, Mariah, welcome to Underworld Party. <laughs> do the little greets. dance. Do the little greets, dance. Greets. Hello. Yeah, say hello to all the invisible audience members in the future. <laughs> uh, hello, futurists. Oh, yes, be prepared for some attention that you did not expect. Oh, no. <laughs> so, Mo, how are you doing today? What's going on? <sighs> well, um, I'm, I'm like having a, a conversation in what to me is the morning, which is unusual for me. Um, and, you know, contributing to this like electric uh, excitement, nerve, newness energy. Uh, so let's see, Curi- curious what that'll into. Yeah, <laughs> cool, great. So I said a bunch of things about what you do from the outside. what the hell do you feel like on the inside doing all of this creative work both professionally and sort of semi-professionally and like what do you like what's your what's a kind of day like for you or like how do you even hold that melange (laughs) yeah i mean they're all kind of it's, for me, it's just like cre- creativity is just kind of like the ness or whatever coming through. And then there's just these different like, I don't know, hose attachments that I have access to that I can just change the shape of how that comes out. And, you know, that was maybe more like purely that when I was, a, you know, pre-capitalism child. Uh, at this point, there's there's different kind of levels of like for a long time I've referred to my my clothing Etsy fashion style whatever business as uh, being my life raft in capitalism so that has a 
whole thing with it, but it still is just, you know, part of the nest coming through is the terror of capitalism and how to deal with that and remain free and <laughs> feel yeah. like I'm contributing something that is helping people in some way. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and also feeding me. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. And so, so, so there's this place in your life where this business has to live <laughs> this sort of like fashion business where it's like paying your rent with it and stuff like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of the life raft. And then there's these satellites that you do. And I'm just curious, sort of like which of those other satellites you spend more of your creative energy in, or is it, is it, yeah. can, you even do, can you even think of it like that? Do you, you know? No, I, yeah, I totally, I totally do. I, I, um, I definitely have this interaction with, you know, what pose attachment I, I reach for based on largely what, um, what it's able to, how much that's able to connect out in the world. So in my like teenage years, painting was really, like I sold just tons of paintings all the time. Like people just really, it was it was a uh, creating relationship and it was like connecting in the world and so I felt like I have room for that to flow out of me uh, moving to Portland less of that for sure and the, like art scene here is fucking weird honestly <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. but uh had a couple interactions when I first moved here in my early 20s with just like these white male gallery owner or like I'm a art manager and just felt really like predatory. I hated it. I mean, I was right, just, right. <laughs> like uh, producers or something. Yeah, it's gross. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting. And controlling. They, it felt very like, sure, which I can't, I can't abide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Um, and then, yeah, so music at this point takes a lot, a lot more or um, engages a lot more with with me um than painting at this point but uh yeah because that yeah yeah no totally um and the music is that relatively new for you did you always know you were going to do that because i don't think i knew that about you when i met you i don't know like when did uh -huh. that start for you um well um my parents were both very like into music when i was growing up um my that neither well my dad is a sort of a musician he's like plays improv piano but it's very extremely neurodivergent abstract stuff sure. um <laughs> uh but they both liked music a lot and would like dj these hippie freestyle dances and and stuff so i was had music around me always and then at i think 15 or 16, I started um, writing lyrics for my partner who played guitar, but had like this intense internal editor that just completely destroyed any ability to allow words to come out. And they'd like, ya da 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 da, melody. And I'd just be like, oh, those are these words, here you go. Um, so it started then, but I had a intense terror of my own voice that I have, worked through uh for years like I was also really into like choreographing all my friends in like basically drag shows when I was a little kid <laughs> uh, so there was this like whatever but but like this voice thing was the definitely the last the last piece of it and like own, owning the music in that way myself how did that happen for you? Like, how, what was your transition between like, I'm writing poetry or lyrics or whatever, I'm writing words that you could say, <laughs> and mm -hmm. I'm making things in the world, like I'm painting, I'm choreographing, I'm doing all this stuff. But mm -hmm. what's the transition that you had to go through to be like, to even play with it, to like even use your voice in a playful way, not even talking about performance yet, you know? Yeah, I mean, terror. <laughs> terror 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 and death and uh uh 
privacy honest like trying but also not because so once i so i was in, i was in some other bands as a teenager like i wrote most of the lyrics for the band but then i like played percussion and was just like really animated on stage but silent like a clown okay kind of thing um right 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 right, right. you were like uh, yeah yeah back up yeah back up weirdo <laughs> yeah pretty much but secretly also the the puppet hand because they were <laughs> right. all doing my words yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> um but i started collaborating with my my bandmate julian theme who is another like kind of homeschool pisces art baby weirdo uh born born five days before me <laughs> hence, hence the sibling oh i see uh, i see and uh yeah they were just coming into like finding themselves musically their mom is like a domineering piano teacher and so they had this like <laughs> music is the this thing and then having to find their own way in it and so we both were kind of like let's do this find our find our ways but we also have grappled with this like previously being like oh child prodigies of some kind and so there's this pressure of like let's instantly really so the first song we made together yeah. we released which is wild uh, to me it's still online it's called butterfly curb stomp there's been several other versions of it um and i did yeah i don't know i go back and i listen to it and there's just so much terror so much terror in my voice yeah. <laughs> um but yeah the the it was definitely like a, a forging through the some kind of ego hell together to to, right. to excavate this and um i think it really came through once we we took a, a break from from that like decomposition of whatever was blocking us and then i kind of went off on my own with just like my laptops crappy microphone and garage band and just like by myself recorded my voice and then also allowed my ego to relax and try karaoke and that <laughs> was really helpful as well <laughs> yeah totally karaoke yes yeah. singing other people's words not my own so that right I could... right because there's a layer here of like just making sound is in yes. itself terrifying but yeah, making exactly. sound that is like words that mean something is like an extra layer so oh maybe yeah you can maybe you can step it one at a time right Mm -hmm. exactly around yeah so that's you know that's interesting to me because like i you know i don't think of myself as a singer but i do a lot of i don't even know if a lot's the right word over the years i've done a lot of vocalizing like workshops classes series like learning how to produce healthy tone in the voice and just like mm -hmm. kind of a somatic a somatic uh kind of way of like producing sound for the sake of producing sound yeah having fun with producing sound mm -hmm. and i'm still in a place where most of my vocalization is what could be considered gibberish yeah like i sing i sing to sing but it's gibberish singing so it's just like tones and weird sounds and animal noises and like growls and and chirps and it's just for me, it's it's like I really enjoy using the voice for what the voice could possibly do outside of the boundaries of certain uh, cultural norms, right? But yeah. then on the other hand, I also write a fuck ton of poetry, which is in English. Oh, yeah, you do. In English. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I also yeah. write articles and I write a lot of prose, nonfiction kind of stuff, and it's a mix of poetry, prose. I do a lot of experimental writing, which I'm trying to spend more time doing. And what has been interesting lately, and this is very new for me, is taking some of my poetry or experimental writing and then tr trying to make up a song from it. Mm -hmm. That it isn't, I didn't write it as a song. And I think this is something oh, I want to get into with you is like the process of writing lyrics. How does that begin for you? What, what door do you walk through? Because for me, I'm like, I write the words for the words and they have a certain kind of rhythm, mm -hmm. but I don't think about them all the time as if I were singing them from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, 
come at it many different ways. Different songs come into being through different, some of them, especially in my earlier, like I'm writing lyrics was like uh, almost like psychotically aware of like syllable counting and rhyme and like very, very putting a puzzle together kind of yeah, like. Yeah, so that kind of poetry that. writing. But I also do when when I'm when I'm writing, it's it's extremely free write, just like. Yeah. So there's also times where it's that comes out and then I just, you know, work with moving them around until they kind of fit a sort of rhythm. Ah. Um, and then there's times since finding comfort with the music and familiarity where we jam a lot, we just like play, uh, where I can just like, oh, the melody that you're playing makes me hear this and it sounds like this word. And then that word leads me to this word and this word and this word and this word. Right, right, right. Um, right. Yeah, so occasionally even uh, I've written songs kind of as like a parody person like Weird Al would write a song like <laughs> take a different song and I just fully keep their whatever just at, to have some kind of boundary yes like you're to pour into or something mm -hmm. okay. but it has nothing to do with them and then the melody changes okay it's just <laughs> like it's and the same thing with with rhyme too there's just this like there's this freedom in in selecting your boundaries for me that you can like bounce off of yes. and just like Phew. yeah and do you when you're doing this i mean this is great stuff but when you're doing this um you like you said before when you were a teenager you would hear the person's melody and that would spark in you a kind of lyrical additive right like oh mm -hmm. these are the lyrics yeah. So you were able to sort of hear music and translate that or somehow associate that with words. Mm -hmm. Is that still the case for you that you need to hear the melody or is it just one option? No, no, definitely not. That's, uh, yeah, it's just one option. Although it's hard to put my finger on, on how or even if they're different, but I feel like there's a different thing that happens if it's words first versus melody first. Right, right. Super, super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So what's what's most exciting about you right now in this songwriting process? Like, what are you kind of focusing on currently? Well, what I'm focusing on currently versus what's most exciting to me, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pick, <laughs> pick one. Pick whatever yeah, you yeah. want to talk about. I don't well, we're, we're focusing a lot on trying to... Um, harness these songs because we can write we write songs just like through the through the um pandemic we were there was a few months there where we were writing like five new songs a week that we would just perform at the end of the week live um on, on stream uh but yeah we can just write songs extremely fast um the challenge that we've been trying to like grapple with is how to harness those songs and record them and release them in a way that's like, does them justice. Right, mm, interesting. Or something, right. it's a little bit like, mm, I don't know, taking responsibility for them or something. There's something yes. heavier about it that's, <laughs> yeah, totally. I that's that I don't animals. love. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's very much like this, this song is alive and you're also producing a lot of them. So I think maybe, are you having like a kind of just volume issue? Like you just are able to make lots of songs. And so, cause some people would have a lot, like they're pro like, it's probably not that way for them, you know? Like no, no, it's not. <laughs> I know lots of musicians who work on, you know, three or seven songs for a year or two years or four years. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can't imagine that right. I would feel so trapped. Right. So this is interesting to me because it's like there's something here which I actually relate to, which is like not dwelling on what I've already done. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've I've written a lot of stuff, never really published anything. And I very rarely and I mean, this is to my you know chagrin. I very rarely go back and 
look at them again or edit them. Sometimes I do though, yeah. and it's really fun. But yeah. for the most part, I'm always interested in what is happening right now in my, mm -hmm. in my creative process. It's all about this, like, this is emerging now. This is what I'm feeling now. This is what's coming out on the page now. And then maybe after I go do some secondary artistic process with what came out the first time. Mm -hmm. right? Like maybe it's editing, maybe it's remixing, maybe it's like, what would this look like if I drew a picture on it? What would this, you know, like I mm -hmm. do take the material and try to sort of translate it or have it spark a kind of other new thing, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, this is, it is this image and now this image has this rhythm and like I, I tend to sort of bounce around like a kind of game of uh, following clues or breadcrumbs or something. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, this led me to that and that led me to this and and because of that I don't spend a whole lot of time on the on the other magical part of writing which is the editing process. Oh the edit. <laughs> the yeah. editing process of like mm -hmm. Oh, I don't really want to, you know, like that, that's happening in the moment. I'm kind of editing as I go. Sure. But then there's this other process of actually refining something and going, what is this missing? And do I want to put it in a larger container or something? And I don't know, is that like when you're popping out these songs and they're full songs, right? Like you could just be like, they're done. Yeah. They, you know, they're done. They're done. But Pretty they're much. also this, it's also like, well, but they're also a work in progress that you might actually want to do something more with, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, uh, editor, I used to say all the time that I do not have an internal editor. Like I just don't have one, which is why I can just yeah. <laughs> everything out, um, which I don't think is exactly true uh but also but yeah i also used to paint when i paint i'd paint in one session and then it was done and i would not go back to a painting and they were full paintings it wasn't just like they're like representative art whatever um but it took me it definitely has been like uh something that i've been growing an aptitude for being able to tolerate sitting with things longer or coming back to them or what it's, it again it feels like responsibility like like I'm <laughs> shitting out these babies and <laughs> actually taking care of them yeah. but I have a terror of you know mm, corrupting them or smothering them or like over yeah yeah fucking with them like it's like i'm just them. Yeah, yeah. i'm just the slide is is, is my natural inclination like i don't want to kind of right, like a hand, right. I'm a hands-off parent yeah you're like be free yeah exactly but also exactly. like why did you lose all your clothes <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I told you to be free but then you come back <laughs> um well that's interesting do you think I mean you, this is this might be a sensitive topic but like like we're talking about art as a living entities you know yeah you know both of us are animist I mean, I would assume that you're animist. I've hung around you enough to be, you have, you're surrounded by plants and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and like little creatures and stuff. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, there's just something interesting about like how we as artists grow up in the family dynamic and the cultural dynamic that we <laughs> and how we then treat our babies, right? Like maybe not like human babies, but other kinds of babies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> For sure. Um So did you I, go the opposite way? Is that what you're saying? You're like, be free, be free. No, no, no. I'm I'm actually I'm I'm not family rebellious at at real really at all. I'm like I'm kind of basic I'm like the ideal form of what my parents were trying to do. I'm like oh, okay. Yeah. Um yeah, my my dad is a uh, his, is a child of a Holocaust survivor who like had a real whack, traumatized, damaged, damaged immigrant family. And just like, it, he's the youngest and just like escaped as soon as he could and became like a street performer and um, 
got really into Castaneda and it's just like, I live in a dream and the power of masks. And actually I don't even want to be around people. I just want to dance at trees. Um, freedom, freedom, <laughs> freedom, look freedom. Out for the webs. Look out for the webs of people. Yes, um, totally. <laughs> and like improving is always better than improving. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. um, a lot, yeah, but you know, he also didn't want to be a parent. Uh, yeah. So there was that too, but um, that is definitely a part of what I am. And then my mom is like a delightful sex death witch hippie lady who's really passionate about how angry she is at people for making trash. And she likes to like make little art things out of like trash and and stuff and uh yeah also comes from like a really destable family and was very like oh my children i just want you to be you yeah um and i went to a weird hippie school in the woods where that was a democratic learning environment where it was like pretty much anarchy <laughs> It's awesome. <laughs> worked worked for me really well. It didn't work for all kids, but um, right, right, right. yeah, it was like mixed ages, five to 19. So it was just like, I had lots of like older kids that I looked up to and like little kids that I would like teach how to do stuff in the art room. And uh -huh. like, we'd like wrestle around in the field, sure. build fairy houses. Right. It's multi-generational schooling. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, For that's sure. cool. Is this is this school secret or does it still exist or what? It does not exist because no child is left behind. Thank you. Um, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't exist anymore. Sadly, it was a it was a small window. Mm. But yeah, that was my entire schooling experience, aside from being homeschooled before that. So you were homeschooled till what age? Eight. And then from eight to 18, you went to this other place? 17, I decided I was ready to graduate at 17. And okay. I wrote an essay and did a presentation to the school and they voted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. Did that count as like a high school diploma? Yeah, it was accredited at the time. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. You totally yeah. lucked out. You I was totally... just like, yeah. yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. I... Did you ever go to college or anything? No. I, I tried community college for a term and a half and I was like yeah I can do this and then, you know I got AIDS and whatever and then I got sick halfway into my second term in the winter and was just like wait a second I'm not really actually doing art anymore what am I doing like why am I do why would I do this bye right right so. yeah right so you just keep doing what you do <laughs> yeah exactly that's what I've always done <laughs> that's all I know how to do right um, and, and then you basically, so you graduated and then started making money off of the paintings? I actually um, got a paid apprenticeship sewing when I was 15, still in school, okay. um, at this, this local um, antiques and costume shop opened up in my little town that was run by this woman who had retired from doing costumes and movies for 30 years and we just like became buddies and I worked for her for uh eight years she just yeah it was just like I've always got work for you come in whenever you want still another like right. go ahead be free come on we're chilling yeah. like, I've never had a boss or a authority figure that I recognize <laughs> you're very lucky that's awesome yeah, and I, I strive hard to keep that that way. Oh, like, yeah, totally. That is yeah. Number yeah. one goal. I will work yeah. very hard to maintain that. Totally. You know, it's absolutely true. Like I always say that, like, if I could tell my few, my past self or any child, mm -hmm. like, okay, what what have you really learned about how to survive? You know, I'm fucking forty one or something. I don't even know how old I am. I think I'm forty one. Um, I would say never have a boss like yeah. always figure out a way that you can aka create your own business where you can cancel or 
make up your own, but at least you sink or swim by your own kind of merit and creativity. And you also get to focus on what you actually want to focus on. And, you know, I definitely survived by having jobs uh, that had bosses, but I have a lot of trauma from dealing with that entire world, you know? Yeah. Um, right. Like, you know, like I worked, you know, these retail jobs and night shift jobs and warehouse jobs. And then I became a caterer and then like a server and then a bartender and like a nightclub and restaurant person. And it's still like, even if you go to that level of like, but you're working in a nightclub, it's like, yeah, but you're still working. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. still listening to yourself to like listen to people and do things you don't agree with. And like there's an entire like just strange dynamic in the capitalist economics, you know, and and, you know, I'm really like I'm interested now. And, in, you know, like I started my business uh, fuck like four years ago, mm -hmm. years ago. And I all I started basically being like, I have no fucking idea if this is going to work. Oh, yeah. You no, know, like you just go in being right. like, there's no way to know until you give it enough attention to be like, oh, I think I need to keep working at this or this level. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk a little bit about like, yeah, like a little bit about just how you started your, your business. Like you worked for this woman for a while. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, where did you start a business during that time? Like, was it just like a lot of overlap or? So um, at that time, I also sold a lot of paintings separately, mm -hmm. just kind of casually, but they just flew away from me somehow at that time. Um, but when I moved to Portland from, from Cottage Grove, my small Oregon rural town south of Eugene, uh, that is when suddenly I was like, okay, it's me, here we go, hit the ground. Um, and that's, yeah, that's when I started my Etsy. And I also, in the first couple of years of like trying with that, as it built up, I did um, different like commission sewing jobs that I found on Craigslist. Like I, I did piecework for this woman who made uh, furry costumes, like furries, like fursuits for fetish stuff. But she was like really weirdly aggressive about like, it's not a sex thing, uh, but then she also sold sex toys on her website. I was like, I didn't ask, you know, it's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I did uh, superhero porn costumes. That was fun. They treated me really well, but, um, and paid me really well. But I, uh, then my Etsy started just being so reliable and solid. And I just, uh, yeah, I stopped doing that and just fully focused on my own thing. And now it's more, more a, a matter of like putting on the brakes and protecting myself from it as a <laughs> runaway train that would cause me to work all the time. If, right. So if you I basically have enough, you have enough of a wait list now that you could, you could like, you could either work all the time and get paid like, well, or you could like hire an assist assistance or something, right? Like you're at that point in your business. Yeah. I, uh, sure. <laughs> it's, saying, instead you know, I choose okay. to do neither. I get paid enough right and i only work well i sew three days a week and then you know there's another day of like packaging stuff up and taking it to the post office and then um every day of the week you know i'm answering questions from customers and stuff and um mm -hmm. but yeah so i yeah hiring somebody scares me i think it's because i don't i'm i'm scared the, the idea of boss is like a demon no, in my totally. mind yeah and totally. so i'm like well you can't you can't be the boss either i guess i don't i don't i i prefer not to yeah well i mean this is this is interesting because it, it touches into like what you know i'm just gonna say like animist capitalism you know in yeah. the sense of like you've actually <laughs> noticed that more growth isn't useful like you yeah. hit the limit and then you just work with that and you don't try to become bigger. Yeah. People do not understand that. Usually they're like, you can, they, I know I can give you the numbers of people who are doing like ethical construction in Bali. You could send your designs there. They would do it. You just kick back and like design new things. I'm like, right. Thank you. 
<laughs> yeah. That does not sound true or real or like what I'm, Yeah. like I care about making things with my body. <laughs> right, right. You, you like making it, not just being the designer. Yeah, I, I mean, cause a lot, I mean, well, I, I design most of my stuff, but I also really like the interaction, direct interaction, because everything I make is is made to order and like custom made to measure. So that's that's a huge part of my my business model is just that I don't like making potential trash right. that nobody wants. That's we right. have way enough of that in the world. So I love being able to just directly like this person comes to me, they want this, I make that for them. They are happy they had something made specifically for them <laughs> yes so this is that thing too where it's like you're 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 crafting this they're crafting these goods and these materials but you're also creating very local localized relationships yeah so that you're not just like i made 500 of these and they're selling in boutiques across the country no and i never i don't even know who the fuck is buying them no, that doesn't interest me at all. Yeah. It makes me nauseous, honestly. No offense to anybody who, yeah, you know, of course. yeah whatever, or whatever. But for me, who cares offense. No, I'm throwing <laughs> offense at you. We're to, we're trying to make a better world. Fuck yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's very real that like, you know, there is something here about like disability justice. It's like if you ever did get disabled, you might have to, you know, change your mind about some things you don't like. Oh, you for know, sure. and that's for sure. real. But for right now, you are a maker. You're making, and you're relating, and you're you're really just doing it to the degree that you can have a quality of life that you actually want. Yeah, which you know, I grew up very poor, a HUD food stamp, like moving all the time, child. Um, so the level that I'm at now, I feel like holy shit, is this a fluke? How did, how did this even happen? But then I look at like, you know, charts of income, whatever. I'm like, oh, I'm like pretty much the lowest one still, but it feels great to me. I don't know. Like, yeah, the relative subjectivity is, is amazing. Yeah, me too. Like I'm yeah. like, I'm more better off than I kind of ever was, but like it took like, you know, three decades. And also I'm like still, on the bottom of the totem pole or whatever yeah. you call it. Like I'm not, it's not, I'm not special. Like I'm really, yeah. I'm really in the dirt. Like, but it's interesting the, just the subjectivity also of like being an American, even though I was poor and always had food stamps, I'm never gonna be able to say that I was as poor as like someone in a so-called developing country. So it's like totally weird. Yeah, you know? it's, like it's, weird. Yeah. it's, it's very, absurd. It's and very absurd. Like absurd, I, ex exactly why the idea of like, I'm just gonna keep growing my business and and my income is just like, such a, I don't know. It just doesn't even right apply yeah, I mean, to my subjective well, experience. Yeah, and I mean like, like I don't know. Like I think about things like supporting communities or supporting family members with money yeah. like a lot of people do that growth thing because they're mm -hmm. trying to sort of like make their family better or you know like they have these other yeah. responsibilities you know that i don't have and maybe you don't have but it's interesting mm -hmm. to me to think about like animist capitalism when also you you want to distribute wealth to certain places because mm -hmm. you're like i want to fund a nonprofit or like i want to like start a program that's going to be free but it takes money to run or something you know like you mm -hmm. think about these things that you might be able to do with more money and then it starts to get a little fuzzy for me of like oh yeah you know for sure yeah. for yeah. sure i yeah i mean even like um you know my my band my other my, my biggest baby the hungriest baby um, you know, it wants, it wants money. It can give me like Christmas lists all day long of things that it wants me to buy for it. Um, and there's a way of like, well, if I just like, you know, worked as if I'm, you know, a full-time sweatshop, whatever, uh, I could provide for that. And that would somehow improve 
but I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm too, I'm too aware of the like, right. The light, that's like the also light. like a, that's also like a never ending game too. Yeah. Like the band would ask for things into infinity. Yeah, probably. And that's, probably so. that's real. Like, I mean, you know, like, <laughs> but, but if I ever get over my, my uh, you know, terror of, of being boss, no, of anybody but myself, um, yeah, hire, hiring people would, could, could be a really uh, positive thing. Like you could be, like you could be what that costume lady was to you. Yeah, for that's sure. That's like the thing, that's like the model. It's like, mm -hmm. you kind of work for me, but you're kind of just apprenticing and you're kind mm -hmm. of just a community member and I want to help you. Yeah, the difference there is she was rich. <laughs> she was like Hollywood <laughs> moved to little town rich. So she didn't need to worry about like, oh no, I'm waste. I'm like spending my time teaching this person. Oh, like, yeah, she didn't care. So maybe, you know, yeah, so who knows? I don't know. I have a hard time speculating about the future. That's another oh, thing. Yeah, okay. I don't, okay. I'm like driven, but I'm not ambitious. Yeah, that's interesting. I would say mm -hmm. that's similar to me too, is like, I don't know what the future is. Like, I don't know, I don't <laughs> know what options will pre be pre come presented in the next yeah. 10 seconds, you know? Like, I'm always trying to be like, I don't know, like, <laughs> But there is just something about like, there is a kind of motivation and maybe that's the driven you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. There's like a motivation to create or to be inspired or to channel or whatever dance, you know, but to just like keep being alive, like, oh my God, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really in this process of whatever the fuck I'm doing, cooking, yeah. making, yeah. you know, crafting, yeah. whatever. But as, in terms of like yeah this kind of theoretical speculation about the future and w like a goal that you put out in the future <laughs> yeah yeah it's like, okay okay cool right on right on yeah. yeah yeah i think i feel like i've i've gotten the response of a lot of people who are like wow how did you like do, you know how you do so many things and how did you get to where you are and self-employed and blah, blah, blah. Like they just, everything kind of disillusion doesn't understand whenever I'm like, I don't, I don't act, I'm not ambitious. Like I didn't, I just try to do what feels good and make sure that I can keep doing what feels good. And it wasn't like I had that five year plan or some, sh like that's not, I don't, I don't do that. I don't make <laughs> plans. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah we're taught to be so like projectile on on our on our world and our future that totally yeah don't know how to just like relate to it as it's happening uh-huh <laughs> <Thanks>. yeah <laughs> nice yeah that's great that's great <laughs> exactly what's up um I'm curious if, uh, so there's a few paths I'm thinking about doing this sort of the second part of the conversation is like, one, we haven't really talked about your amazing plant witchy life and your tarot witchy life and your astrology. So there is this kind of like things, things that we haven't touched on that I know really inform your life yeah there's that that's a door we could walk through but we don't have to walk through it yet and then there's another door that's just like in me which i i would love to get to is like and this is just a a game option but like yeah. how easy would it be for us to actually like write a song in the moment <laughs> like like you know what i mean like for real like could, could yeah. we, like, could we write a song in five minutes or could you write a song in five minutes? And like, <laughs> I don't know, like, I'm very like curious about that process because both of us are like moment in the moment, but you clearly have a much more easy pathway between back and forth between like rhythm, melody and like l stream of consciousness, lyricism. And, you know, to me, like, that's the edge. I'm like, oh, yeah, what what's over there? Yeah. yeah. Um. 
Yeah, I don't know. Like, so it's interesting, you know, that's, those are the things that I'm sort of picking up on. I'm just wondering if what you're picking up on. Um, yeah, those sound good. I'm also picking up on that I need to go pee. So I'm going to run and do that real quick. <laughs> yeah, okay. All I'll right. be right back. Okay, cool. <laughs> pausing, pausing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, different streams. Um, writing on the spot. So definitely one peculiarity or whatever about me is that uh i'm at this at this point at least i'm not like a freestyle rapper who can just straight brain to mouth it almost always needs to travel through like hand and eye like i need to see the words I'm an extremely visual person mm -hmm. um but you know i just grabbed a notebook so if you <laughs> totally. if you want if you want to try um, yeah. that there's a, there's a few games, word games that I've really uh, found a lot of joy in in the past, I don't know, 15 years or something. Um, one of them is word for word, which is just trading off. Each person does one word. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I love that. It's a, um, another one of those just like delightful limitations to bounce off of. Uh huh. Uh -huh. That just like, I, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I would love to maybe do like three word games that you want to introduce to me or that you think are fun in the moment, and then we can just go from there. <laughs> All right. Um... <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, usually usually word for word i'm realizing right now is like a there is a there is a kinetic element of you both writing on the same page and like the two different handwritings oh yeah uh -huh. and things like this um right but uh the limitations of virtuality is yeah yeah let's real. <laughs> let's check into that and and like see if i can find a find a stimulating bumper within these boundaries um do you have you do you do you make like record music at all like mm -hmm. no i don't have the i don't have the the gear really <laughs> yeah 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 um you don't make like computer music or no. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we could. I'm, I'm reaching for like pulling up an instrumental. It could be anybody's. I guess we could just like take any uh, lyricless music uh -huh. and decide to we're going to put um, words to it as if they consented to that. Uh, Otherwise, yeah, we can just we can just word for word and try it. Yeah, let's try it. Let's just try word for word. Let's try. Okay. It. Yeah. No, I hear okay. you. So, how do we do it? We're we gonna say it out loud, or are we gonna write it down at the same time as we say it? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess we'll we'll yeah we'll write it and say it. That sounds that sounds good. Let's okay. try that. <laughs> Okay. Um, uh, I should I go first? Or you want to go first? You can go first. Okay. So just I'm just to be host. clear. Just to be clear, I'm just gonna say a word. Yep. Okay. Therefore. We. Oui. Uh, spontaneous. Divergence. Milk. Timing. 
blast off. Reliably. Opened. Fresh. Marker of sanity two. Was that a TO two? Yeah, yeah. Carelessness. Within separation, from another perspective. Simply. Delicious. Um, reaped. <laughs> reaped? Yeah, like, like R E A P E D. Mammalian. Um, blue, like the color blue. Distance. Curved. Toward. Shining. Horizons. Forever. Quaking. Mm. Persecution. Of. Delight.
departs. Quietly. choreographed. Chewing. MTV. <laughs> like MTV. Let's end it. let's pause there. Let's pause there. Let's pause there. Yeah. <laughs> so I noticed a few things. I'm just curious. Um, I mean, I love that game because it's like, I mean, there's just so much of this like entering strange dreams. Oh <laughs> yeah. A minute. Like I'm just. Yeah. Like, oh, there's another dream. There's another dream. Don't know. You don't get attached. You don't know. Stay with it. Yeah. It's Be totally ready for it to show you new things. Yeah. It's yeah. Um. Well, I'm curious too, is like when you were looking at it, were you focused on the very last thing I said and, and kind of riffing off that? Or were you just kind of going, what am I hearing right now? Or were you sometimes rereading the whole thing? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. I, li I like to reread the whole thing, but also definitely interact with what the last thing you said is. Right. And those are like, those are like the two uh, bumpers. Yeah. Like so those are your two bumpers. I mean, I love this stuff. Cause like for me, I wasn't using one of those bumpers. I wasn't rereading the, from yeah. the beginning at all. I was like, sure. just constantly in this, like, you can remember the last, like one or two words, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing in your short term memory. And like, yeah. And then sometimes I would be like, maybe there was a period that we didn't say and so i could start something new or mm -hmm. or i could go with what was um sort of like being associated with whatever just was said mm -hmm. like if you say you know something then i would go into like okay so i'm seeing this texture and i have this movement and there's an image and something is shouting this and it's like out of all of those things you have to pick something that is like just the one damn thing that out of all these out of all these things you could all say the, yeah because there's so many images and so many strange moods and atmospheres happening you have to pick one goddamn thing so it's yeah. like okay yeah. is it a color is it a texture is it a is it an action word? Like, what is the thing that describes the thing that is just one part of this giant googly mesh of like something? Yeah. And I think that what's coming to me from that is like part of being able to this be this like driven, move forward, allow the creativity to come through is understanding that, you know, it's basically one foot in front of the other. You have to pick where you're going to step. You're probably going to fall if you try and just like step in 10 places at once. So step once. No, it's not going to be your last step. We're going back and forth. Yeah. Like there's a million options, but like be okay with just picking one. Yeah. And like trust that you'll dance it. That's and right. that's like a, that's like a, I think part of the fun of this that like loosens up the, the trust and flow brain. And when you're doing this by yourself, are you kind of word for wording yourself? <laughs> sometimes, for sure. Um, yeah, sometimes I use rhyme as one of my bumpers to just keep me going forward. It's like rhymes will have the secret of like where I should land next and that meaning will come through. Yeah, right. right. Um, like rhymes are can be like very trite sounding or like doctor, but I find them delightful and magical. Oh yeah, totally. Please. 
Yeah, there's there's definitely a place for rhyming, even if it's just like um, a rhyme that isn't a perfect rhyme. Oh yeah, like a, silla, a syllabic rhyming, mm -hmm. like, like one syllable matches another syllable in another word, and you can kind of get a rhyming yeah. quality out of that, like mm -hmm. we like coupling, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. And yeah, it's like it's this is a bit more because like we got to take time. It's not quite like stream of writing where you're basically just, you know, like yeah, yeah. words are coming quite quickly. This mm -hmm. was this had the this had this game had the uh, option for this contemplative pausing. Yeah. Yeah. Which is different than like the first thing that comes into your mind. Yeah, yeah, for Often sure. I was not using the very like that for me, that was a bumper like you can go with if the first thing that comes to your mind has the certain feeling, that's what yeah. you say. Yeah. But if it doesn't, you get to like hunt around for something that you don't Absolutely. know. You know, you don't know. Is it an adverb? Is it a, you know, <laughs> like what am I hunting for? Is it a preposition? It is is it like and? Is it like um? Is it yeah. a word? hasn't technically been invented yet you know like i i think about these things when i'm writing like sometimes you write something and it's sort of it's sort of understandable on a certain conversational level and mm -hmm. you actually try to make it like less understandable <laughs> yeah yeah you know, you're totally. like you're like mm -hmm. oh no i want this word to be a made-up word or like a kind of composite word that i invent out of other things in this moment. oh yeah yeah those, right. those are important. Those are very important uh, tools, right. friends. Like a lot of your lyrics that I've heard that I've really liked are this kind of like Blade Runner dystopian kind of uh, world or something, you know, like there's a world. I don't know if it's a future world. It kind of seems a little bit futuristic, but there's mm -hmm. also just a kind of like vagueness and strange kind of quality to like some of the lyrics that you you know play with and I'm, I'm curious about going from what we just created mm -hmm. and tying that into sort of like your creative process of like honing it down into something like, yeah yeah like what happens when we take this and apply something to it so what would you apply to this kind of content that we've just generated I would First, read it and find where the natural, because we didn't, you didn't use any punctuation, or at least I didn't when I was writing it. No, down. no punctuation. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I would, I would read it out loud and find where I like the meaning to kind of snuggle up with itself, and kind of put breaks there to um, do that. And then, if I need to, I would add or subtract some things just to make it more rhythmically musical. Sure. So let's let, let's just yeah, no, totally. Let's start by either you or I or we can take turns. Read it, read the read it out loud just as it is, inserting or like however you decide to read it. Like yeah, bard, play with the text. You can repeat the text if you want to. You let me know when you're done with the exercise. Does that sound cool? Yeah, sure. Uh just uh start with just a sort of straight reading of it. Um, Therefore we, spontaneously divergence, milk timing, blast off reliably opened, fresh marker of sanity to carelessness within separation from another perspective, mm -hmm. simply delicious, reaped mammalian blue distance curved towards shining horizons, forever quaking. Persecution of delight departs quietly choreographed, chewing MTV. I like it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what? I, okay, cool. So like, I'll read it. I'll play with reading it. And then we'll bounce back to you and see what happens. So you can yeah. you know, take notes, play with the text, but like, mm -hmm. okay. Therefore, we spontaneous divergence. Therefore, we spontaneous divergence, milk timing blast off, reliably opened fresh marker of sanity, to carelessness within separation from another perceptive, simply delicious reaped mammalia blue distance, curved towards shining horizons, forever quaking, persecution of delight departs quietly 
choreographed chewing MTV. <laughs> yeah, it definitely, it gives me this image of like, like this, this ecstatic apocalypse moment that's happening where suddenly you reach, you reach this delight as you're being like blown off of the planet. And as you're flying by, you see that, um, that MTV astronaut with the MTV in his face. And you're like, oh, this was just <laughs> that all along. <laughs> pretty good music video, I think. Um, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's do it totally so, so this so this song or this this verse of this song or whatever is clearly taking place like in this death moment of someone yeah <laughs> and it might be a cartoon and it might just be the the disembodied consciousness of an old mtv advertisement <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes Oh, I were I was just pixels in an '80s digital dream. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, right. And you see like the Noid and like Pac Man. And, like, mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. right. We're just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it's just delicious as they're all viscerally being blown apart into smaller and smaller pixels. Oh yes, yeah. into space space dust. Yeah, totally. Just oh, the oh, the pleasure. <laughs> right, right. The MTV man's like head just. <laughs> Gone. I'm seeing it through that like v VHS filter on Instagram too, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. bad bad VCR filter. <laughs> naturally, naturally. Cool. So, so yeah, you read it, we read it, we get these images and then what would you, how would you start playing with this? Um, a lot of times I will, I just have like a, a kind of dragon horde of writing that has made it like this, this far, or maybe I'll take it farther depending on the moment. But, and then when I'm, when we're jamming, when Julian and I are jamming and he'll be like, oh, I made a million songs and he'll, play me bits of all of them and I'll be like oh that one and then I'll look through my dragon horde and find something that's like at this level and then I'll be like okay the rhythm of this song is that and then I'll channel it next oh. into that so or you, yeah okay let's just uh, oh, right yeah. so you have another thing but this is really mm -hmm. interesting because it basically mm -hmm. means you ha you sort of like you don't even half finish you you just 25 percent it right you like generate some content yeah. see where it gets you play mm -hmm. with it d you're d you just put it in the put it in the bucket yep put it in the bucket at this point a lot of it is bucket right mm -hmm. and then when you're actually playing and you can let it breathe mm -hmm. you just sort of see what grabs your attention and you just use it as a kind of prompt or template for like Oh, let's try to shape these two. Let's try to mix these two things together. Your your instrumentals and mm -hmm. these lyrics, and maybe mm -hmm. it works out, and we'll just like kind of go with it. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a big one for sure. Yeah, and when you're doing that, how long do you stay with that until you have to go? Oh, this isn't working, or do you always make it work? Oh no, I definitely don't always make. No, definitely not. Um, it's. I mean, honestly, a lot of it comes down to mood. <laughs> like if I'm in a relaxed, trusting mood, um, I can stay with things longer, but I feel like most of the time I'm a little bit impatient, honestly, and I can know pretty fast, like this is, this is fitting and I'm finding some forward motion or some interaction with this piece of bucket meat yes. um, or not. And I just move on because I feel like there's always more steps. Right. So there's always more steps. And are you just like following like how quickly you can feel delight or something or like joy or pleasure? Yeah. Yeah. I would say I would say often like the pleasure of of feeling like, oh, that slid into place. Like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh that yes, that is having a that is having an interaction where it's like connecting. Yes. That delights me. 
Yeah. But yes, let's see how much farther this path goes. Totally. Mm -hmm. And so that's between like the words and the music and how you're saying them or singing them. Mm -hmm. And I would say like, you know, it's clearly what happens when you're painting too, right? Like you put something down and it immediately interacts with and changes the total relationship of every other thing that was there before. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The trick is, uh, one of the tricks I would say is staying willing to be um, brave with those steps and not like minimize them too much. Like, oh, it's always just one little step, but like, it can be a big step. Like, that's okay. Like, it's still right. just a step and you can, you, there will be more and you can totally. just trust that you can deal with it. But yeah, I think, um, yeah, taking, taking brave steps, even if, I don't know, you don't have to pressurize them as like, oh, what is the right, what is the right one? Right, because you can, whether it's a small step or a big step, mm -hmm. it's not the final step. No, when well, that one comes, it'll be death. Right, so, <laughs> right. So, so in a sense, you don't have to paralyze yourself before making a choice. Please don't. Because there's just a kind of like slap it on there. <laughs> you kind of like see yeah. what happens vibe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like no perfectionism, which is a kind of weird expectation of something being good. I don't even know what that, you know, like, yeah, if I, yeah. the next stroke I make, you know, I've, I've definitely had that sort of paralyzing feeling as a child, like, mm -hmm. ah, I don't know, like everything is so important. Like, it's just, does, it doesn't, it doesn't, not conducive to actually wanting to make art, in my opinion. No, it's not. <laughs> You're, I, it's like yeah. too scary. It's that's not that fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I too have had to become like less and less precious with yeah. what I think is good and more mm -hmm. of just following. Is this interesting to me? Yes. Yeah. Does like it... I'm not even like, do I feel good about this? It's like, I don't know. Am I interested in this? Like, yeah. What, what about this is interesting. And usually that is a much more better barometer for like continuing down an interesting hole in the narrative you know like oh this little hole is interesting mm -hmm. uh versus like all these other holes that i could choose that aren't necessarily interesting mm -hmm. you know and you have to go you know um, you know that that to me is is a fascinating pro part of like this kind of like instantaneous editing it's like yeah. you're kind of it's like you're kind of shaping your own process through games or limitations or just plain interest of like mm -hmm. You know, like sometimes I write something and it turns out to be that I wrote the first part and then the second part is actually in some way using the first part as like a trolling it or something. Like I'm using yeah. it as a, as a way to like mock something about like yes. poetry yeah. or like, or like sure. swear, at, swear at the poetry and suddenly it, then it's... <laughs> It's not even as if I'm making a poem as much as I'm like, it's almost like a cut-ups method, but multimedia cut-ups method where you're like, turn on the radio. What does it say? That's the next line. Mm -hmm, Flip mm -hmm. open this book. What does it say? That's the next line. Pull a tarot card. What does it say? That's the next line. It's like, I'm this weird arbiter of communication between disparate voices and yeah. you put them on the page and suddenly it's like, oh, that's really doing something for me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But it's not necessarily the kind of crafting where people are like, this is how you do the craft. It's more like crafting as a kind of collage making or something. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Collage making is definitely, I feel like kind of snapping back to my parents for a second my mom does a lot of like collage based like whether it's collaging with trash or images or fabrics or whatever she has a very collage brain and my dad as well he builds with like recycled trash materials and it's very collagey and his brain is extremely collagey and he does always did that book like random book gemini i can touch any book and because of the my ultimate play mode it will speak to me thing and so i feel like I just have, I, I collage, but it's like, I have all of the random stock just in my own 
access. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, it is like, it's like a collage of like a thought past me had with the feeling that present me has with the music, with the um, cynical clown in my head, with the like self-pitying sniveler. And then they all kind of come together and create this weird play. Right. But there's definitely a, a like collage yes. of right yeah so, so what's interesting to me to put this collage concept together with sort of like animus multiple personality disorder <laughs> <laughs> which is like i'm not even going to say it's a disorder but it's like it, there's definitely people that i've met and talked to and i share this and i wonder if it's because i'm gemini moon but i don't know but I've always had the sense that like everyone's just like a menagerie of like weird chimeric yeah. zootopian like you know like that we're all it's like yes then there's the crotchety old man in the corner who sometimes is a bird like yeah like yeah. like didn't everyone have that experience of their own mind <laughs> like that it wasn't theirs or something like yeah it's just like it's like I have a mind and I know it's mine, but it seems to be inhabited by people I didn't quite invite. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they just yeah. seem to have appeared whole cloth from the mind itself. Like, and mm -hmm. for some people that would be like, oh my God, you're schizophrenic. You're hearing voices. It's like, I think we're all hearing voices, buddy. You know, like, right. I think that some of us though, just have some kind of weird synesthesia where if we listen, we certainly start to see something at the same time that we're listening, right? Absolutely. Like, I'm listening to something. It's kind of weird. What am I listening to? And then suddenly there's an image and I'm like, did, mm -hmm. did I hear the image or mm -hmm. did the image just appear because I was hearing? Does it fucking matter? Like I ha and then sometimes there's persistent voices in the head where mm -hmm. you're like, oh, right. That's my like whiny asshole that I call Jermaine or something, you know, yeah, yeah. like, like, like that to me is like this collage idea, but like as a personality, as like an archetypal being who's just like, uh, I'm a zoo. Yeah. You know, like I'm a jungle, like I'm a weird mm. Muppet show, you know? Yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think, um, I wonder if uh, part of why everybody doesn't seem to express that or inhabit that is just the, um, like the terror of handing handing the mic or like panning the camera over to those things and trying to like block them out and screen them out um, and, and and thus you know they stay the shadowed or kind of un, un, unacknowledged and so they don't yeah they don't think that they're there but what a, I don't know they're uh, they're such a resource if you right. learn how to work with them. <laughs> Right. And I, I love the sort of like stage of like, it's an open mic. Everyone gets five minutes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> exactly. Like, For like sure. you, you give a limit to the voices so you don't, mm -hmm. you know, because I mean, it's real that like in the woolly cavern of our minds, we don't actually know what we're doing and we don't actually know what it is even like, I don't know what my, like, I don't even, when I go my, I, it's not even mine, like my mm -hmm. mind, I'm like, uh, I'm kind of, it's more the other way around. Like I'm, I'm the offshoot dribbling of this like giant dream that's happening and like mm -hmm. just spit out this form. And there's this whole like the bucket of like the bucket of generated scripts that you're making with the writing mm -hmm. that exists inside me somewhere where who fuck it like who's feeding that bucket I don't know like that bucket is not up I'm not in control of that bucket I'm in yeah. control of like whether I let the bucket out on paper in this world mm -hmm. that's what I'm in control of and like the shaping process of like what you're saying mm -hmm. do I pan the camera do I you know, like, how do I play with this phenomenon that's happening? You know, it's how do I play with the voice or whatever? And mm -hmm. Yeah, this collage mentality and it's like, yeah, animus, multiple personality, like neurodivergence, I think is like, yeah. I think it's a very real thing because I don't know if every single person has the same experience of like, oh, yeah, I totally talk to all these creatures that, <laughs> you know, exist yeah. inside, like. <laughs>
Yeah. I think we need to find out if that, that's like a real thing, you know? That's like a real... <laughs> like, like I, I, like if you get down to like the core of like who I am as a kind of like seed being or whatever, it's like, I think that is that kind of consciousness. It's like this kind of setup. Mm -hmm. Like there's like a setup and you can't really re rewrite the setup, you know, on some level, mm -hmm. like you can add on to it and remix it, but like the setup is kind of like your base ingredients, you know? Right your birth chart or whatever yeah, yeah <laughs> this kind of thing yeah the thing yes your birth chart your birth chart okay cool so there's so much you know but okay so back to this epic piece of blah let's revise it just like let's wash over it one time and see what happens okay so how would you wash over it like what's the what's the one play-doh machine we're going to put this in I guess I would just like, so I've got it on this part of the page here. Yeah. And so I would, I'm going to read it and like rewrite it as I'm reading it and just add or subtract whatever I feel like it's missing or wants to let go of. Great. Awesome. Go, mm -hmm. go, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
So what happened for you? How, like, what, just walk me through a little bit of like the fun pockets you found and maybe some stuff yeah. you have to avoid. <laughs> yeah, one thing that I remembered as I was doing this is um, that I find different uh, like mind machines are initiated by different writing tools, like a, a pen or pencil versus a typewriter versus a computer. Yeah, totally. Fully, total different brain. And usually this like kind of copy it, move it around, adjust thing is done on the computer. That's very that brain where you can just right. like copy, paste to the copy, da, da, da. Yes. Um, where writing feels a lot more like splurping it out kind of. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think, yeah, and I also definitely heard heard the uh, rhythm of like, I found a lot of like three line thing, which to me in like a, a four line grid of, of four, four music, it's like three line. And then like, there'd be some kind of musical moment there that would happen as like a response. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This sort of pause that I found in it after okay. three. Uh -huh. um, and then, yeah, I also found rhymes threw in some sprinkled it with some rhymes okay it's always like sugar for me uh, okay yeah the rhymes <laughs> with the sugar on top yeah the little crystals little crystals on top mm, yummy uh, yeah, yummy crystals um, right 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 um so i'm like let, let, let's let's hear it how do you normally then take this that where you're like i did a little editing and I razzmatazzed it up and I found something inside, right? I found a, a different form of the first thing. Mm -hmm. um, would you then just read it again? Or, you know, do you even start singing like first, like speak singing? Sometimes, I mean, there's, I'd say most of my like melody stuff does not come before the other music. It's a little bit, it's a little bit rare. It's happened to, a few times, but I don't, yeah, I don't actually um, write melodies by myself that often. It's very much something that comes into being in the jam, jam space. So you write lyrics without melodies? Is that, that's the, that's your thing? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. pretty much. Um, or the melody exists first and then I write the lyrics to it. Uh-huh, yeah, 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 um, right, right. But, but yeah, this is definitely a space where I could be like, Oh yeah, that song that you're showing me right now, that start of a song, like I could, this this is like shape enough that it could could try and interact with it, and then it might, you know, I might cut off three of the verses, or I might add five more, or I might mm -hmm. realize like, oh, the lines need to be longer because I want to have a faster flow on this beat, yes, or right, exactly. I might need to, right. you know add some more e vowels throughout <laughs> totally totally <laughs> exactly yeah no yeah. i'm totally with you can we just read it though as like a kind of weird spoken word absolutely like there's a little drummer in the back or something uh-huh uh-huh yeah <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. therefore we initiate spontaneous divergence milking timing innate <laughs> Blast off reliably, opened fresh, marker of sanity, music. <laughs> Carelessness within, separation from another perspective. Again, begin, music. Uh, simply delicious drip, reap mammalian blue distance quick, curve towards the shining slip of horizons forever quaking. Persecution of delight departs quietly in the night, choreographed despite chewing on that MTV bite. Outro breakdown. Uh -huh. Pick something from in here that I really felt juicy about and like riff on that for a while. Really. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. right, right, right. So just structurally, let's go through that again, like just real quick to sort of finish up here. It's like, at the end, we could really feel like a kind of, almost like that pop song quality, right? Where it's like, da, 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 you know, you have this thing. At the beginning, it's a little more avant-garde where you're like, I don't know, is this just like saying words in the ethereal vapors or, you know, uh -huh. like whatever. Uh -huh. 
But um, is that how you sort of see it on the page too? Do you see it in like these little chunks of oh, yeah. things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Very, it's very collage chunk like pieces and the pieces will fit with the pieces that rhythm is made out of in the music. And it'll like, yeah, it's very, uh, it's chunky. <laughs> It's chunky. It's chunky. It's chunky. But the, you know, again, it speaks to this kind of crafting thing where it's like if you're making mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. it has to fit together, <laughs> right? It's like there is a or, fitting process. There's a fitting it, process. Unless you decide not to have it fit together, right? Then sure, sure. That can you know, be fun yeah, too. Right. It's like there are all the all these options to sort of like play with. Um, the words and and the reality is is that this poem what regardless of how good or you know subjectively good the poem is mm -hmm. it might still get completely cut up and changed in the process of making it into a song yeah for sure it okay. might it might be totally transformed by its relationship to the sounds right, mm -hmm. right. so there's this part of like the maybe the poem doesn't necessarily die but it it replicates and some of its replications mutate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mutation, mutation. Do not fear the mutation. <laughs> Don't fear the mutation. Guide it, engage with it, sure. Yes, right. guide the mutation. Allow it. Fantastic, I mean, that's, this is this is great. Like, I really love getting into like these meta processes with like making art because I think that for a lot of people, like for me, when I was in art in a, public school mm -hmm. no one ever there was there was technique strictness but there was no process uh conversation whatsoever about like how the artist interacts with the process of making art in yeah. order to create in such a way that the creation itself is pleasurable yeah not yeah. just this oh you 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 shade like this so it looks like the thing that you're drawing Mm -hmm. which is all this technique but there's no like if you enjoy technique you're gonna love that shit right like if you <laughs> enjoy the process of like draftsmanship and you're like exactness and the, there's a craft to that too right like the craft mm -hmm. of like the line that matches and and mm -hmm. there's that but there's very little talk about like how different kinds of people actually require different kinds of conditions of the mm -hmm. process in order to thrive right like the, yeah. the conditions of your art making process have to be conducive to your your quality of life in some way and that is going to be different than somebody else's quality of life right like oh yeah people are going to gravitate toward different processes like i particularly love this collage and sort of like cut ups method mixed with bibliomancy but then i also just mix it with straight up channeling like what is coming out right now and there's a kind of musicality to that that is almost inherent in its own non-edited state, right? Like I, those are the things that I enjoy. But again, it's taken me, you know, 30 fucking plus years to find an artistic process. And I haven't said I've like found it, you know, like blah, mm -hmm. but, but mm -hmm. to find the inklings of an artistic process that doesn't hurt me. Ah, oh, yeah. Like that's real, that's, that's like a real thing I think a lot of like, so-called failed artists are like people who like like me who are like on the track to being an artist early but got completely destroyed by the way society deals with art making. yeah and like the way classes or schools teach art making is very yeah. like uh you know restrictive and domineering and based on this false idea of technique not not necessarily the process by which surprises would happen right you know what I mean? Like art as a art as a kind of container in which you actually create the conditions for being surprised. Yeah. Rather than the conditions to create a perfect something that already is preordained. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to make this thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm very much more interested in the process of like when you start the process, you don't quite know what's going to happen. You might have a impulse of like i want mm -hmm. some kind of thing i want mm -hmm. I, I want the color red i really need to redify this you know or yeah whatever. yeah but how that actually appears on the page is not necessarily going to be known 
Oh. And, and in fact, trying to know it before it happens is actually like ruins the art process for me. It's like, I don't fucking. Yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, I'm sure there's tons of people who are like, they get some kind of stability out of like, I know exactly where the next line is going to go, like a mandala or something, right? It's like, right. yeah, yeah. That's like a super meditative, interesting thing too. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like fascinated by the kind of like different people need different processes by which to sort of nourish various parts of themselves mm -hmm. you know like this kind of multiple zoo thing is like the the tiger needs to paint like this and the zebra needs to sing like this you know like yep. like they need their different kind of uh bucket room studios like this kind of different tools and different like ways to approach the making process it's like uh, it's very different for everyone i, I just love the I think get, I think creating a more of an ease like this kind of conversation also doesn't necessarily happen in public or in real life that often. Right. Yeah, for sure. I can't I remember the last time I talked so long about about the uh, about my artistic process. Yeah, I mean, I think that for me as a as an as an artist or a teaching artist or whatever the hell I call myself tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, the lack of the this kind of conversation is i think like food for the process itself like the the process of being able to fuck with your process and be like oh i want to try this or what mm -hmm. if i want to this like the ability to take a step almost like you're still doing art but your art is now on this kind of like hologram that you're working on you mm -hmm. know this hologram of like I want it to feel like this and I want to, I, I enjoy it when these things like this happen. So if I enjoy it when things like this happen, I might create the conditions for it to happen more, or I create the conditions for completely random things to happen so that I do not, um, I don't just necessarily, oh, you <laughs> but so that I don't like necessarily always fall into the same habit, right? Yeah. Like, like you, you paint the painting and then halfway through you turn it upside down and you're like, okay. Oh yeah. This Very, kind important. Of thing where you're like, Very important. Very <laughs> important. Keep turning the canvas so that you're not like stuck in a, I do, I, I, I'm predicting what this is going to be. You actually yeah. have to defamiliarize yourself with, mm -hmm. with what mm -hmm. you're doing in every given moment. Yeah, totally. Totally. I think part of that for me is just selecting the right bumpers to bounce off of that like send me angled and interesting directions you know like another person's entire consciousness with word for word like i have no way to predict that and it accepting that and like getting into it really just like right opens that like constantly spinning the canvas <laughs> i mean i love it i love games like exquisite corpse for stuff like this too mm -hmm. like all mm -hmm. the games in which like some part of the process is absolutely not under your control Yes. And you're, you're bouncing off of that like feedback loop that comes with like not being 100% the sole creator of whatever you're creating. Yeah, it's like death practice, right? <laughs> totally, all the time, <laughs> yeah. all the time. You know what's up, you know what's yeah. up. Yeah. Cool. So um, I think we have to wrap it up, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, talk about this shit forever. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, I'm curious if there's anything that like you are doing that you want to talk about, or is there any stuff that you want to promote, you know, obviously, you know, you can just be like, go watch videos on our YouTube, but mm -hmm. yeah, just curious if like you act, are like excited about something happening in the near future, could be your stuff, could be not your stuff. Oh, geez. Um, I mean... I'm like, I'm excited about the sun and like little critters flying around outside my window right now. That's, yeah. that's, that's immediate excitement that I, Good. that I don't think that really helps future <laughs> viewers in August or whatever. Um, <laughs> no, I, think, I think it's totally fine. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, yeah, they get what, so they, get. They, get what yeah, they get. They get what they get. They um, get what they get. I'm excited for, you know, I, I like, I, I, I love when things that I create interact with people and maybe as a bumper to them that sends them in a new direction. So I don't know if my ramblings have whatever, go look at the things and hear the things and 
think about the things and let some things out. <laughs> yeah, love it. Links in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, links in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like Mo's Baba Yaga wisdom. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> do the things and the things do the things and let the things out. Come on. Yeah. You'll know what it means when it happens. Come on. <laughs> totally. Great. I love it. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming on the podcast. Um, I hope we do it again in some capacity. Like uh, I'm going to put all the links. Um, seriously, listen to music, especially if you're like a fan of like industrial and like synth wave and stuff like that. It's like really cool. Um, yeah, thanks so much, everyone. Uh, please donate if uh, this has helped you or pass it along to somebody you think you might benefit from it. So thanks everyone so much. This is the end of the show. This is the Woo! end of the show song. This is the end. Uh -huh. This is the end of the show. Uh. Stop recording. <laughs>